All right, it's that time again. It's that time again. Mr. 500 here doing it real big. Super big. And yeah, we're going to do it real big right now. We're going to be working with a little bit of the, my favorites right here. Equilateral triangles. Yeah, boy. We're going to be working a lot with equilateral triangles. We're going to be working on two major formulas. These two major formulas use a lot. Now, we're going to start with the first one right here. We're looking for the area. Equilateral triangle. Height squared times the square root of 3 divided by 3. That's all it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's all it is. So all we got to do is substitute correctly. We got 48.24. Raise it to the second power. Multiply it by the square root of 3. And then divide by 3. And guess what we just found right there. Guess what we just found. We, when we do this problem, have just found the area of an equilateral triangle. So let's go ahead and buckle up and get in for this awesome ride we're going to take with this equilateral triangle, okay? So 48.24 raises to the second power. Get 3, find the square root of it, and hit multiply. 3 divide, and we got ourselves a beautiful answer. 1.34 times 10 to the third, or 1,340. Simple as that, simple as that. All right, let's keep it going, let's keep it going, let's keep it going. We got another equilateral triangle right here, another one. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Another height, another height. So we got height squared times the square root of 3 divided by 3. And that's going to be the area of this equilateral. So let's go ahead and start substituting. Let's go ahead and start substituting some of this stuff into this area formula right here. Right here. Okay, so we got 7.21 times 10 to the 10th. And we're going to go ahead and square that bad boy. Then we're going to go ahead and find the square root of 3 divided by 3. And that gives us the area. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I like the equilateral triangles. Because really, you only need one piece of information. One thing. Either the base or the height. And you could technically find out every single thing about this equilateral triangle. It's a pretty interesting little triangle right here. Because we could use either one dimension, the height. Or we could use one dimension, the base, and we could find the area of this equilateral triangle. It's because this equilateral triangle has got a lot of beautiful patterns right here. And the only pattern I see is that we got 3.00 times 10 to the 21st power. Don't even attempt to write this in standard notation. Oh, man. Standard form. It'll be too much. Too much. Now, remember when I said... Remember I said we could use the height right here? You could use the height. I mean, they didn't give us the height this time. They gave us a side right here. They gave us a side. But you know what? That side is also the same as the base right here. Why? Because by nature, equilateral triangle means all sides are the same. They are the same. Not only are all sides the same, but the angles, each of these angles is exactly the same. Each of these angles is 60 degrees, 60 degrees. Now, I don't know why I put little congruent lines on those, because at the end of the day, the arcs tell you itself that they're the same, all right? But at the end of the day, we got to understand equilateral triangle is a very special type of triangle. So now that we're using the side, there's a different formula, but it's kind of the same. Side squared times the square root of 3, but in this case, we're not dividing by 3, we're dividing by 4. So in this problem, we're going to go ahead and get 23.32, square it, multiply it by the square root of 3, because that's how it is, you know what I'm saying? Then we're going to divide it by 4, and we get our answer for the area. Look, these problems are super cake, super pastel, all right? I'm not talking about pastels like these beautiful pastels coming up above us. I'm talking about pastel as pastel, as in cake, that Spanish cake. And this is going to be real cake when we're getting our correct answers, like 235, or 2.35 times 10 to the second power. It's easy work, ladies and gentlemen, easy work. So let's keep it going. Let's keep it popping. Hey, that looks really familiar here. That looks super duper familiar here. It's like we almost did this one before. Well, don't freak out. Same number. That doesn't mean it's the same formula. But in this case, since it is the side, well, it is the same formula. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to go ahead and get 23.32 square root times by the square root 3 
And then since we have the side, what are we doing? What are we doing? I'm asking you, what are we doing? Oh, I hope you told me. Hope you told me we divide them by four, and that gives us our answer. So yet again, seems like, well, I go ahead and type it in just in case. Just in case something in this magical world of math switches up on us. But you know what? I don't think it did. I don't think it did because we get the exact same thing. 2.35 times 10 to the second. Or 235. 235. Look, these problems get real easy once you get know the formula, okay? The formulas, I mean, that's just all it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's just all it is. You understand how to use the formula? You memorize the formulas, and you're going to be able to do these problems like nothing here. Like nothing. So let's go ahead and make sure we got this in our tool kit. In our utility belt. Because, whoa, I hope you saw something. Mr. Delgado saw something. He was doing something a little wrong right here. That shouldn't have been a two. That's one of the biggest problems that he usually sees. People change the square root. And in this case, if you put two, man, oh man, I hope you called me out on it when you saw it. I hope you called me out on it. If you didn't call me out on it, well then, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Because then you wouldn't have got this right. You gotta be able to be more aware, more aware. But at the end of the day, I got 5.49 times 10 to the seventh. Or five, four, nine, one, two, three, four, five zeros at the end. That's what I'm saying. Now look, I'm gonna do this one more time because you know, I wanna check myself. I wanna check myself because you know what? I just made a crucial error right here. Square root of two, get that out of here. We don't need no square root of two. Get it out of here, man. You're gonna get these problems all wrong. And we ain't getting nothing wrong here. Not with Mr. 500 doing a big dog style right here. And hopefully you're doing a big dog style. So let's go ahead and take a look at this bad boy right here. In this problem, they gave us the perimeter. We don't want that perimeter. But we got to remember some things about equilateral. We want a little equilateral stuff, okay? Well, that means all sides are the same. So really, we can get that at perimeter divided by 3. And we can go ahead and use that side formula. So first things first, we're going to get 27.4 divided by 3. And that's going to equal our S. And then we're going to use side squared times the square root of 3 divided by 4. Make sure it's a 3, not a 2, not something crazy. Square root of 3. And so let's do it. 27.4, enter. 3, divide. Now I got 9.13 as the equilateral triangle side. Now we're going to go ahead and square it. After we square it, I got 83.4-ish. All right, all right, all right. We're going to get the square root of 3 and hit multiply. 4, divide. And we got ourselves a beautiful answer, 36.1, or 3.61 times 10 to the second. Ladies and gentlemen, these problems are cake. Do not think that they're hard because equilateral triangle questions are made to be easy. Super duper easy, ladies and gentlemen, super duper easy right here. And you know what, Mr. 500 here is gonna make sure that you are on point. Because we gotta get, we gotta be the best right here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, boy, yeah, boy, yeah, we gonna be the best right here. So check out this problem right here. We got ourselves an area, and they're asking for the perimeter. Uh oh, we gonna be starting working backwards right here. And how do we get perimeter? Well, we get that side and multiply it by three, and that's gonna give us the perimeter. But I don't have the side. I only got that area. So instead of working forwards here. We're going to have to use that area formula that involves that side, side squared, times the square root of 3 divided by 4. And we're going to have to work backwards. We're going to have to undo what we've been doing here so we could get this answer. Let's set it up. You know what I'm saying? First things first, let's go ahead and cancel out this 4 by multiplying both sides by 4. What happens? 4 is canceled. 4 is now on the left. That's right. We got 4 times area equals side squared times the square root of 3. But now we don't want that square root of 3 right here. We're going to divide by the square root of 3. We're going to divide both sides by the square root of 3. What happens to that square root of 3? It gets canceled. That's how we do it. So we got 4 times the area divided by the square root of 3 equals to side to the second power. Now again, we don't want that side to the second power. We want that side only. We only want that side. So how do we get rid of the second power? Well, hopefully you got it. Square root, yeah boy. So that square root cancels out that two, and we got that final formula here 
to figure out that sign using that area. We got four times the area divided by the square root of three. Square rooted equals to the sign. And once we got that sign, and once we got that sign, we go ahead and multiply by three, get that perimeter, you know what I'm saying here? So let's go ahead and get it popping. 27, 13, enter, four, multiply. Now I didn't substitute it, but I'm gonna substitute it for you right now just to make sure that you understand what I'm doing. We're gonna get that area substituted in, 21,713 times four, divided by that square root of three, and then get that square root. And that's gonna give us the side. You know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and do it. So I went ahead and multiply three square root divide. I got 6,270. One step missing, one step missing. You gotta square root that bad boy. And now we get that side and we start writing 79.2 and we get an answer, right? 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 No, you wrong right there. Because that ain't asking for a side. Remember, you gotta make sure you solving the question. That 79.2 is not the answer we write down. That's just the side. One last step, get three, hit multiply, and now we got a good answer. Now we're gonna get it right. Now we're gonna be a success. That's what I'm saying here. We get 237, or 2.37 times 10 to the second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you gotta be careful here. Gotta be careful, because a lot of times, we might mess this stuff up and put the wrong answer. All that hard work goes down the drain. I could have put that as my answer. And that would have been incorrect. I mean, some work would have been done correctly. Yeah, I would give you that. I'd give you props on that. But really, man, that could have gone in a real bad direction right here. We don't need to be going that wrong direction. We got the right direction here. Yeah, okay, okay. I was going to make a little joke here, but you know what? We don't need to be listening to no boy band right now. No boy band, Mr. Delgado. What are you doing? Mr. 500 talking about boy bands. Yeah, we ain't going to be doing none of that. We ain't going to be doing none of that at all. You know what I'm saying? All right, all right, all right. Let's take this a look. Wait a second. I mean, I don't even know one formula. I only know one formula. I only know one formula that we could use that side with. And that's the area formula right here. But wait a second. They ain't even asking for the area formula, man. What's going on here? They're actually asking for the height. They're asking for the height. So maybe we're gonna have to solve for the area right here. We're gonna get that area, but then we're gonna have to input it into the other formula. Height squared times the square root of three divided by three. Maybe we're gonna get that area from the side and then work backwards, undo it to get the height. What you mean by that? What you mean by that, Mr. Delgado? Well, let me show you what I mean by that. Let me get my uh, pretty pink, pretty pink pen right here. What we gotta do is we're gonna multiply this formula by three on both sides. Three's cancel. We're gonna divide both sides by the square root of three. You know what I'm saying? Very similar to what we've seen in the past. And then we're gonna square root this answer to cancel out that square right there. So what we really got is that we gotta find the area. So we can go ahead and substitute it into the second formula and work backwards. Work backwards from this formula. Three times our area divided by the square root of three, square rooted. And that gives us our height right here. Now, really, I want to practice doing a little bit of this. I want to practice working forwards and working backwards. Because we got to get used to both. But maybe a little later on, I'm going to show you a little strategy here, man. A little equilateral strategy. Some, some of the powers that this equilateral triangle has. Because there's a lot of little hidden techniques we could use. But right now, let's go ahead and make sure we know how to work forwards and backwards. We're going to hit 2.73. And then we're going to go ahead and multiply by 10 to the fifth. Hit enter in that calculator. Get three square root. Hit multiply. And then divide by four. And guess what? I got 1.18 times 10 to the fifth. You better not write. You better not write that for your answer. Because I'm telling you right now, all we did was find the area. You better not written that down. Ooh man. I saw you. But now we got the area here. 1.18 times 10 to the fifth. But now we gotta work that thing backwards. We gotta work it backwards so we can find that height. So we're gonna get three multiplied because we just did the work. We're gonna hit three square root and then hit divide and to cancel out that height squared we gotta square root our final answer and this seems completely actually this something seems a little wrong here i think mr delgado must have done something wrong you know why 
because my answer has times 10 to the second power. I think I might have typed this incorrectly. So let me go ahead and type this correctly. We got 2.73 e to the fifth. And then we're going to square it. We're going to square it. Yeah, now my numbers are looking a lot different. Maybe I might have done this wrong. Multiply by the square root of 3, divided by 4. I got 3.23 times 10 to the 10th. I think I messed up the other problem. I think I messed it up a little while ago, okay? My area right now is 3.23 times 10 to the 10th. I think I messed it up a little bit. Hope you got the right answer. Hopefully I didn't throw you off because Mr. Goddard, I make mistakes. I make mistakes sometimes. Then we're going to multiply that bad boy by 3. We're going to get 3 square root. And then we're going to hit divide. And then we're going to square root that bad boy. Now this answer seems a lot more reasonable. My previous answer had times 10 to the second. That means it was in about the hundreds. It was about the hundreds. This original side is 2.73 times 10 to the fifth. That's about 273,000. All right? That's, 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 no. No, no height is going to be hundreds. But this one looks good because my height is 236,000. That's making sense. Or 2.36 times 10 to the fifth. All right, let's go ahead and keep practicing this. Let's practice this a little bit. Because you know, I made a mistake. Does that mean you can make a mistake? Oh, that's what it means. But you know what? We're not here to focus on our past errors. We're here to just keep working forward, working hard, and making sure we could do the work correctly. So we here could be the best. You know what I'm saying? Let's go ahead and get it. So I'm gonna start with six, eight, seven, five. Six, eight, seven, five. I'm gonna go ahead and square it. Then I'm gonna hit three square rooted, hit multiply. And then I'm gonna hit four divide. And what you should have gotten, what I got, is about 20 million, 500,000. Or 2.05 times 10 to the seven. That's what, I'm got. That's what I got for my area. But now, we gotta work that area formula backwards. Remember, that area formula is height squared times the square root of three divided by three. So let's go ahead and do that one. How do we undo it? How do we undo it? First step, multiply by three. That's how we undo that three. Next step, instead of multiplying by the square root three, we're gonna divide by the square root three. That's how we undo that one. Three square root divide. And then last step, how do we undo that square? Well, we better square root. So I'm gonna hit square root. Another completely reasonable answer. I got 5,950. 5,950. Why is that reasonable? Because the height here, ladies and gentlemen, that height is always going to be smaller than the side of an equilateral triangle. You know, really, there's a little pattern that we could do, but I ain't going to show you that yet. Well, let's go ahead and practice working on this a little bit, but there's a little pattern that, you know, this equilateral triangle has. It's a pattern that has to deal with not the whole equilateral, but I'll go ahead and give you a little drawing of it right now. It actually has to do with something called, uh, sorry about that little thing at the bottom, the 30, right here, this one being 30, 60, well, of course, that's 60. Why is it 60? Because the equilateral triangle, all angles have 60 degrees. And that 90 triangle right here, it's got a little pattern going on here. Why is that 30? Well, we couldn't have. That's right, we couldn't have. Half of 60 is 30. Notice how we make that little triangle right there. But we talk about that a little bit. We talk about that a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Well, we got that side again. Let's go ahead and work with that side. Let's go ahead and work that side and get that area right here. Let's go ahead and work with that side, get that area. But I'm telling you, we're gonna go back that. We're gonna go back that, that 30, 60, 90 in a little bit. But right now we got that side. Side squared times a square root of three divided by four. That gives us the area. And then we're gonna work it backwards right now. Let's go ahead and check it out. Six, two, six, one, enter. Well, I didn't need to enter it. You could have just hit squared automatically, right? But you know what, Mr. Delgado likes hitting that 2 y rex sometimes. You know what I'm saying? 3 square root multiply. We're getting that product. Then we're going to divide by 4. I got 1.70 times 10 to the 7. Woo, big number right there. About 17 million. But we ain't looking for that area. We're looking for that height. So we got that area formula for the height, height squared times the square root of 3 divided by 3. We're going to multiply by 3. That's how we undo that 3. So let's go ahead and hit 3 times. 5.09 times 10 to the 7. Then we're going to divide by that square root of 3. We're going to divide by the square root of 3 to undo that. Multiply the square root of 3. So let's hit divide. I got 29. I got 29,400,000. 2.94 times 10 to the 7. We almost done. 
Last step, we got a square root. We gonna square root. That's gonna cancel this bad boy out. So let's go and square root right there. And that seems completely reasonable. We got 5,420. Or 5.42 times 10 to the third. Easy work. Easy clap. Easy clap. All right, right here. We got another side. Look, look. You know what? I'm gonna go and show you something here. Maybe you might be able to tell. If I was gonna cut this in half right here. Hmm, right here to here. And I got this side. This being my 30 degree angle. This would be in my 60 degree angle. And of course, if I could draw that perpendicular line, that height right there, well, guess what I got right there? That 90 degree angle. Well, this is gonna be, you know, the side of the equilateral. Well, guess what's gonna happen right here? That means this side is gonna be 3157 divided by two right there. Oh my god, oh my god, right there. So actually, you know, we could have maybe even used one of the previous lessons here to figure out that height. Maybe we could have even used Pythagorean theorem. We could have used a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Or in this case, since we got the hypotenuse, we're going to do the hypotenuse. What do you mean hypotenuse? Well, yeah, we got the hypotenuse. That had nine degree angles right there, so that means this is the hypotenuse. We could have gotten that 3157 squared it. We could have got 3157 divided by 2, get that quotient and squared it. And then we could have, you know, subtracted it, square root, and we get the height. You know, this is a beautiful thing about these triangles right here. Is if you can see patterns, man, you can see these patterns. I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. We could we could we could use that mind. We could use that math muscle right here. Get those easy answers. But you know what? Let's try one more time. Let's try one more time. You know what? I will set up. I will set up 3157 squared minus 3157 divided by 2 square and square rooted. And we're going to make a prediction. Let's see if that answer is going to be the same as the answer we get when we work forwards and backwards. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get 3157. And of course, put in this formula side square times the square root of 3 divided by 4. Let's go ahead and do it. The square root. Then we're gonna get three square root, hit multiply. And then we're gonna hit four and divide. The area I got is 4.32 times 10 to the sixth, or about four million, you know what I'm saying? About four million. Now what we gotta do there? Well, now we're gonna work backwards. We got the area, let's work it out backwards. Let's work it out backwards. We're gonna use height squared times the square root of three divided by three. So first thing we're gonna do, multiply by three, you know what I'm saying? I like to redo this and like to show my steps because you got to show the steps for you. So you got to be able to remember these things. You know, I ain't taking this test for you. So we multiply by three, we got about 12 million or 1.29 times 10 to the seven. Then we're going to get three square root and hit divide. We got about 7,470,000, okay? Because we divide by square root three, undo this square root three right there. Last step, square root it. And guess what? My correct answer here is 2.73 times 10 to the third, or 2,730, which is completely reasonable. The height's supposed to be smaller than the side. It is, and actually there's a special ratio that we're gonna go over in a little bit. You know, I keep, I keep, I keep bringing it up. But you know, I told you, maybe we could use that Pythagorean theorem. Maybe we could use that Pythagorean theorem, you know what I'm saying? Let's see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and use that Pythagorean theorem. Let's see if we get that same answer. 3, 1, 5, 7, and I hit squared. Now I'm going to hit 3, 1, 5, 7, enter, 2, divide. Now I got 1.58 times 10 to the third in my calculator. That's about the missing side from that 30, 60, 90. That's the base right there. That's the smallest leg. Now I'm going to square that bad boy. I'm going to subtract them because we got the hypotenuse. So we're going to subtract, find the difference between the hypotenuse and that leg squared. And we're going to hit square root. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, the top one was what we did together, work forwards and backwards through these area formulas. The one I just entered right now, this one right here, man, that's a Pythagorean theorem formula. Look at that right there. Look at that. Oh my God. Both of them, both of them registered correct answers, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes, sometimes 
If you know what you're doing here, if you know what you're doing, you don't gotta work forwards and backwards through these area formulas. Now I do, I wanna do it so we can practice work forwards and backwards inverse operations and stuff. But at the end of the day, if you know the man, if you could apply math in new situations and come up with this Pythagorean theorem formula, man, oh man, you might got something up in here, you know what I'm saying? So let's get it popping, let's keep it go. Okay, let's get, hey, you know what? I see another equilateral triangle right here. Right here. Hmm. I don't know if it's time yet. Should I show you? We got a little bit more problems. You know what? Let's practice a little bit of that high square. Let's work forwards and backwards here. Now, of course, you may look at me and say, hey, can I use that Pythagorean theorem on this one? Well, I mean, you can't really uh, use that height to go ahead and uh, figure out that side. Well, we probably could use some, but I don't know. Let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and come up with, uh, hmm, let's come up with, uh, hmm, yeah, that height squared formula, yeah, height squared times square root of three. Divide that bad boy by three, and we get ourselves our area. And then we're gonna have to work that thing backwards, because we got that area formula, we're gonna get that side, side squared, times the square root of three, divide that bad boy by four. Maybe we could go ahead and, uh, work forwards backwards this way. All right, let's get that height, 52.87, square root. Three, square root, multiply. Three, divide, right now. And right now, you better have it too, you know what I'm saying? I hope you got it. I got 1,610, or 1.61 times 10 to the third. That's the area I got right now. But we ain't done yet. You ain't done with this bad boy yet. What we gotta do is undo this. We gonna multiply both sides by four. Cancels out that four. We gonna divide by that square root of three. Cancels out that square root of three. And then last but not least, we gonna square root the left side and we're gonna square root the right side, but that just basically cancels out that two. And now, to figure out that side, we can go ahead and multiply that 1.61 times 10 to the third, we multiply that bad boy by four. Three, square root divide, and square root this answer right here, completely reasonable, because the side is always larger than the height. We got ourselves 61.0, or 6.10 times 10 to the first, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Easy work. Let's get it. Let's get it popping. <laughs> oh man, I'm on a roll. I love it. I love it. I love it. And hopefully you loving it too, because you know what? We having a good time. We got that height squared times the square root of three divided by three. That gives that area for me. Let's go in and do this. Nine one one nine. Square root. Then we're gonna go ahead and three square root multiply, and then three divide. We got ourselves that area. I got four point eight zero times ten to the seventh. Now we're gonna use that area formula with the side. Side squared times the square root of three divided by four. Let's go ahead and cancel out that four by multiplying both sides by four. Let's cancel out that multiply by the square root of three by dividing both sides by the square root of three. And then we're gonna go ahead and square root this bad boy right there. So we're gonna get that area of 4.80 times 10 to the seventh. Some of you might wanna call it 48 million. Multiply that bad boy by four. Then we're gonna get three square root divide. And then we're going to square root that answer right here. It seems to be completely reasonable. 1.05 times 10 to the 4th. Or if you want to think about it this way, 10,500. Remember, that side's always supposed to be bigger than the high. Than the high. Than the high. Yeah, buddy. All right, so look, I told you a little while ago, well, you know, you can't really use that Pythagorean theorem here. But you know what you can use? You know what you can use? There's a little bit of, uh, you know, something we could do with right angles here. You know, if you got one side and you know one of the angles, not the right angle, that right angle can't help us for this problem. But if you know one of the angles here, let's say you know this one right here. Well, we know that one, that one's 60 degrees. Or if you know this one right here, that one's 30 degrees. And technically, we're looking for the H right here. We're looking for that hypotenuse of this. 30, 60, 90. There should be something that we could use to figure this bad boy out. I think it reminds me of back in the day. Back in the day, you know what? Whenever I would get really hurt playing, you know, boxing, you know, because I like to box, you know, I'd always get my water. I'd always have to get a little bowl of water right here. Get a little bowl of water. Get a little bowl of water. And sometimes when I would do my kickboxing routines, I'd, I'd kick a little bit too hard. Hopefully you know what I'm getting at. I kick a little bit too hard, man. And I'd go ahead 
and have to soak my toe right here. I have to soak my toe. You know what I'm saying? I have to soak my big toe. My big toe. I'd have to soak my big toe in that water because, man, my big toe would be hurting, especially if I banged it up against a desk, man. Oh, man, sometimes you walk too fast, you bang it up against that desk. Oh, ah, man, my big toe. Got to soak it in some water. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what else I'm saying? I'm saying, I hope you see it. I hope you see it, me making these little jokes and stuff. We could have you so ka toa, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm I ain't talking about soaking my big toe right here. What are you talking about, Mr. Delgado? What are you talking about, man? What are you talking about, Miss 500? You ain't talking about that. I'm talking about Soka Toa here, you know what I'm saying? If I know this side right here, and let's use that 60. Let's use that 60. This is the opposite side. If I know the opposite and I'm looking for the hypotenuse, let's use so. Let's use the trigonometric so. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Hey, I know you've been practicing that Soka Toa. This is what I mean. We could have gotten the sign of 60 right there equals to the opposite which we do know 0 0.020304 over the hypotenuse which is what we're looking for you know what i'm saying and if you know enough about this right here you would be able to see that in this pro formula right here the hypotenuse is actually equal to 0 0.020304 divided by the sine of 60. Or if you wanted to set it up the other way, we could use ka. And we could have set up the same exact thing, but if you use ka, it would actually look like this. It would look like the hypotenuse is equal to 0 0.020304. But instead of doing the sine of 60, we would be calling this the adjacent right here. That O would now have a little A next to it because it would be the adjacent. And we would end up doing the cosine of 30. Both of those, both of those, ladies and gentlemen, would have been able to give us the hypotenuse. Or in this case, once you get that hypotenuse, ladies and gentlemen, well, we could really get that side of the equilateral triangle. You know what I'm saying? So Katoa could have helped us in this problem, you know? Let, let's go ahead and try it. Let's go ahead and try it. You know what? Let's go ahead and try it. I'm going to go ahead and work it out using... My bread and butter for this problem. We're gonna use height squared times the square root of three divided by three. And then we're gonna work forwards. Sorry, we're working forwards from that height squared. Get that area. And then we're gonna work backwards and get the side by multiplying by four, the area, dividing by the square root of three, and then square rooting that answer right there. We're gonna get that side. But maybe you on the sidelines can go ahead and use that as Sokotoa, either one. And we're going to see if we get the same answer. All right, let's get it. Point zero, two, zero, three, zero, four. And we're going to square that bad boy. Three square root multiply three divide. My area is 2.38 times 10 to the negative fourth. What do we do next? Four multiply three square root divide. And then we hit square root. And I got my answer. I got the correct answer. The answer I know is correct. 2.34 times 10 to the negative second or 0 0.0234, all right? Easy work, easy work. But let's check out this trigonometric ratio that we talked about right now. Let's use the sign, the so, the so. 0 0.02034, zero, 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 enter, 60. Find the sign of that, divide. Oh my God, better believe it, ladies and gentlemen. I use a trigonometric ratio, I got that same answer, man. Don't but, let's use the other one, let's use the cosine. 0 0.020304, enter, 30, cosine, divide. Is that what I think it is? It looks like the exact same thing. I got the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, when you know math, math comes easy to you. And that's what I'm all about, about teaching that math, making sure we got that math so we can show them. We can show those mad demons out there. Those people making these hard questions, trying to trick us, trying to make us think, trying to make us grow. <laughs> We're going to show them that we got what it takes to be the best. You know what I'm saying? We're going to master this test, and we can do what we got to do right here, okay? We can do what we got to do right here. You know what I'm saying? So we got this other hype problem right here. And you know what? You know what? You know what? I'm going to show you one last thing. 
One last thing. Now, this is a little bit above you. This is a little bit above you. This is about one of these special triangles. Sometimes, and I said I'd be talking about this. I said I was going to be talking about this. And I'm going to be talking about it right now. I'm going to draw it over here on the side. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very special type of triangle. This is, again, the 60, the 90, and then, of course, here, the 30 degree triangle. Okay, now that looks like 300. Let's make it a little smaller right there. A little 30 degree. Okay. Now there is a little pattern that we see with these special triangles right here. All right. And let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. Well, we kind of already saw this. The smallest side, let's go ahead and label it S. Okay. Let's label it S. Well, we know the hypotenuse because remember, the hypotenuse is this one right here. This is right here, the hypotenuse. And this is the smallest leg. I'm going to call this leg A right here. You know, you guys could see it easily right there. And if I didn't want to call this a hypotenuse, well, we could have also called it the C. All right. Well, C is actually double. It's actually double. It's actually double. Right? It's double this smallest leg. So you know what? I think something's going to happen here, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I could show you the math, and I don't mind showing you the math. I mean, because look, we already know one of these sides is S, S squared, plus we got this height missing, which I'm gonna call B. S squared plus B squared equals to two S squared, all right? So we see that. Now let's go and let's simplify this a little bit. Well, we got S squared stays as S squared. We got B squared stays B squared, but we can simplify this. Let's go ahead and do two times two because two squared, essentially this means two S times two S. All right, we're gonna multiply two S times two S. Well, two times two makes four and S times S makes S squared. All right, now what's our next step right here? That's our next step. We wanna isolate that B. Well, our next step here, I'm gonna use a different color right here. Let's use red right here. We're gonna have to subtract S squared from both sides. We're doing a little bit of that algebra. We're doing a little bit of that algebra here. What happens to my S's? Well, they cancel. But now we're left with something beautiful. We got B squared here. Now B squared is gonna be equal to, well, four S squared minus S squared gives us three S squared. All right, all right, all right. Now we don't want B S squared though. We don't want that BS squared. <laughs> what we want is that B. Or we really want that missing side, which is the height, the medium, the, the longest leg right here. Well, what do we got to do? Well, we don't want that B squared. We want that square root that thing. You know what I'm saying? We want to square root that thing. Whatever we do to the left, we do to the right. And look at what happens right here, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we're going to be left with B on the left side. We're going to be left with, well, the square root of 3... Who's going to stay in the square root of 3? Maybe that's why we've been seeing so many square root of 3s when we've been doing this problem. You know what I'm saying? You know, all these formulas have the square root of 3 somewhere. Maybe this why. Maybe this why. You know, I, you know, we got to think about these things. I think this is exactly why. But then we're also going to have S. Because the square root of S squared, when we square root S squared, guess what we're left with? S. S times the square root of 3. So you know how I said that this side was S, this side over here, this side right here was S, and this side was whatever S is, we're gonna multiply it by two to get two S's, to get that hypotenuse. Well, guess what B's gonna be? It's gonna be side times the square root of three. So in this problem right here, if we could understand that this height right here is the same as side times the square root of three, we could divide both sides by the square root of 3 right here, and we end up with the side. But not this side. Not this one. Not that side. We end up with this side right here. This side right here. And once we got that side, we got to multiply it by 2. We got to multiply it by 2, and then we end up with that side. That's 2 times the side. So we could have actually, we could have actually gotten... 2771 seven, enter 3 square root divide now the bottom portion of that a that a is 1.60 times 10 to the third we get that multiplied by 2 and i got 3.20 times 10 to the third
All right. Now, this is pretty intense. This is pretty intense right here, okay? So there's a lot of stuff going on. I proved it using algebra of how this thing works with an equilateral triangle with that 30, 60, 90. But you know what? At the end of the day, if you ain't down for this, it ain't, it ain't working out for you right now. But what you can do always works out. Work forwards, work backwards. Remember, I got this answer right here using my special triangle theorems right here. My special rules for 30, 60, 90. But we don't have to be doing none of that right now. What we could be doing is we could have gotten height squared times the square root of 3 divided by 3. Hit that area. And then when we do that area, we're going to multiply the area by 4 divided by the square root of 3 and square root that to give us the formula for that side. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's see if this works. We got 2, 7, 7, 1. Square root. 3, square root. Multiply. 3, divide. So my area for this equilateral triangle is... 4.24 times 10 to the 4. To the 4. A little excited with that number 4, you know what I'm saying? Now that we got that area, we're going to multiply by 4. 3 square root divide, and then square root that answer. And I end up with, huh, this doesn't look right. This doesn't look right at all because the answer I end up with, I mean, does this look reasonable to you? 3.13 times 10 to the 6, it doesn't look reasonable to me because the height's already 2,000. 771 the side should be greater so i think i did something wrong let me do this again because i think i'm trying to work too fast okay let me do this one more time let me slow it down <gasps> slow down get in my center yeah buddy so two seven seven one excuse me square three square root multiply then we get three divide I got my, oh, that was the problem. My area was completely wrong to begin with, okay? I think I might have mistyped it. I think I might have put 271. There you go. I mean, that might mess things up. So you got to be careful. My area really is 4.43 times 10 to the 6. And that seems a lot more, that makes a lot more sense here, okay? Now we get that area multiplied by 4, 3 square root divide, and then square root that. And guess what I got right here? Now I got the right answer, man. Mr. Delgado, he's getting a little messed up here, man. He's messing these little problems up. 3.20 times 10 to the 3rd. Same thing that I got using my, my 30, 60, 90 special case, okay? So this is a special case. I see it in that textbook for geometry. Back in the day when the star test in Texas was planned to be given to geometry students, you know, back in, this was like years ago, this was like four or five years ago when that star came across and they were initially only giving it to the algebra students, but then they were gonna move it to geometry. We saw this formula chart, that geometry formula chart for the star. And on the front, it had tons of geometry formulas. Beautiful formula chart. On the back, it had the trigonometric ratios that so could tell. And it also had two special triangles. One of them being that 30, 60, 90. This was from that. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Now, look, you don't even know all this stuff. But the more you know, the more your mind's going to grow. And our mind is the best muscle we have. Of course, we could be working on these muscles right here. We could be working on these neck muscles, these traps. Yeah, could be looking on these traps. Yeah, buddy. But you know what? This mind right here is the thing that's going to take us to wherever we need to get. And whenever, whenever we need to get to our life right here, that mind's going to do it. So let's go ahead and work on that mind. In any case, let's go ahead and just do these problems now. In this problem, we're going to have to change this height into a side. And then once we get that side, we're going to multiply it by three we're gonna multiply by three so we can get that perimeter okay let's get it started let's get it popping all right hot squared times square root of three divided by three equals the area then we work backwards well let's go ahead and get the area out there first okay so we got 3.33 square root make sure you type these numbers correctly because i already made two mistakes here all right and mr delgado i mean i'm okay with making mistakes we all make mistakes in life but Try not to make too many of them, you know what I'm saying? So I got 6.40 as my area. You know what, let me go ahead and try this again because I don't want to mess up on you. And you guys over here looking at me, making me look all, make me feel all self-conscious, you know what I'm saying? Because we must have got to get his stuff wrong. But yeah, I got 6.40 again. All right, so let's go ahead and get that 6.40. We're going to use that area formula with the side, side squared times the square root of 3 divided by 4. Remember, we're going to have to cancel out that 4. Yet again, I want to make sure we can work backwards correctly by multiplying both sides by 4. Cancel out that times square root of 3 by dividing by the square root of 3. And then cancel out that squared by square rooting this. 
And guess what? We're gonna have our formula. So we get that area. We just got that 6.40. Multiply it by 4. 3. Square root. Divide. Square root. Completely reasonable. Remember that side's supposed to be bigger. I got that side is 3.85. And we write it down, right? And we write it down, right? 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 Oh, no. You got... You, no, no, no. Because we ain't looking for the side. We looking for that perimeter. So what should we do? We should multiply it by... A tray, you know what I'm saying? So three multiply, and now we got an answer. Now we take it to the bank. Now we're gonna be cashing these checks. Yeah, buddy. Don't give me these wrong answers because that's just a reading issue. That's all that hard work down the drain, and we don't wanna throw that hard work down the drain, okay? Let's go ahead and do it one more time. So in this problem, we're gonna go ahead and get height squared times the square root of three divided by three. Gives us our area. And we could already go ahead and see that it's going to be 4 times the area divided by the square root of 3. Square rooted gives us the side. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. If you want to try some of your other ways, you want to use Sokotoa. You want to use this 30, 60, 90 triangle. I mean, you, you, do what's, you do what's best for you. But at the end of the day, I'm practicing these formulas. Because we got to remember these formulas. We got to memorize these formulas. So that's what this video is all about. But you want to reach that next level? You really want to get to that next level? Well, you got to apply all the formulas as best you can, okay? So I got 256 for my area. I got 256 for my area. Next step, we're going to get that area multiplied by 4. Then we're going to get 3 square root, divide, and square root it. I got 24.3 as my side, which is completely reasonable. Remember, the side is supposed to be a little bit bigger than the height, okay? But now we got one last step. Get that multiplied by 3. And now I got 72.9, or 7.29 times 10 to the first. You know what I'm saying? So, easy work. Let's get it popping. One more. We got this height right here. Same thing. Height squared times the square root of 3 divided by 3 is the area. And then we're going to do the area equals side squared times the square root of 3 divided by 4. We're going to work forwards. We're going to work backwards. Remember, our side is supposed to be bigger than the height. All right? Now, look, I'm not going to lie. You know what I would have done? You know what I would have done? I would have gotten 5.012. Enter. 3 square root. Divide. 2 multiply. Because we're using that 30, 60, 90 triangle. And if you want to do that, what do you mean, Mr. Duga? I'll draw it for you one more time so you guys can see it. Well, let me go ahead and undo those two little lines because those were terrible lines. That 30, 60, 90 triangle right there. You know what? I didn't like that one either. That 30, 60, 90 triangle right there. Remember, this side is 2s. This side is s. And this is s times the square root of 3. So how do we get s? We divide it by the square root of 3. And then we multiply by 2. So we divide. So, so what I would get is my height. 5.012 divided by the square root of 3. Multiply it by 2. And that gives me 2 s's which is right there and then after that we go ahead and multiply by three but you know i mean we, we really it's really up to you guys okay so i'm gonna do you know you know i'm gonna work forwards and backwards to the area formulas because i need to do that that's what this video is all about but i mean there is a lot of different patterns here like i keep saying you know i'm a big fan of being able to learn all the ways you learn all the ways you're gonna be able to have always the ways to get ahead in your days. You know, I was forcing that rhyme. You know, we don't always have to force that rhyme. But, you know, I did. I did. I tried. I tried. Okay? So, at the end, I got 5.79 as my side. Get that side multiplied by 3. My perimeter, 17.4. Or 1.74 times 10 to the first. All right? Call it. Let's call it. All right. We got one more. Oh, oh what is that? I see some crazy shit. Who put this crazy shape on? Who did? Was it you? Was it you? I already told you last time it was going to happen. I told you last time it was going to happen. You make me look silly here. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You you, tell, you telling me there's a plan? They telling me it's a plan. Okay, that's cool. All right, we'll see. We'll see. Well, let's anyways, let's get this hype going out the way. Again, you know what I would have done? We got that 30, 60, 90 right there. Remember, this side is the side times the square root of 3. This is the side, and this is two sides. So I would have gotten the height, 27, 1, 5. And 3 square root divide. 
get my smallest leg. And then I hit two multiply and I end up with the side. And multiply that bad boy by three. We got the perimeter. We call it a day. But again, I'm going to write the formulas because we got to know the formulas for area. We're all on different levels here. We're all on different levels. But at the end of the day, you got to be able to handle all of the levels, all right? You handle all the levels. Maybe you might be that next uh, player one right there. Maybe when we bust out those games, you'll be the one making the games. Maybe you'll be the new Mario. Now, we, uh, yeah, I'll let you be Luigi, you know what I'm saying? I'm not Mario, man. I'm Mario, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm Mario. You could be Luigi. Or Waluigi. You know what? You look like a Waluigi. Yeah, you look like a Waluigi to me, man. <laughs> Yahoo! See, I even got the sound for it, you know what I'm saying? You can't do that sound. You can't do that, Sam. Well, anyways, I got 4.26 times 10 to the 6 is my area. Let's work that thing. You know what? Since I'm over here making sounds, I got to make sure that I'm doing this correct because I've already made mistakes. I've already made way too many mistakes. You guys call me out on it. So you know what? You know what? You know what? Okay, anyways, 4.26 times 10 to the 6 is my area. You know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and work backwards. Multiply by 4. Cancel out that 4. 3 square root. Divide. Square rooted. Seems completely legitimate. My side is 3.14 times 10 to the third, 3,140. We get three multiply, and we got ourselves our perimeter. 9.41 times 10 to the third, or 9,410. We call it. Call it. All right, look, 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 look. I don't know what this guy's telling. This guy's over here telling me. This one right here, this one right here is telling me that this problem right here is here for a reason. I don't know what they're talking about here, man. Jeez, what do you, that's not even the same sh Draw lines? What do you mean draw lines? Let me draw, wait a second, let me see. What, what are you talking about, bro? You want me to draw lines? Well, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'll try anything once, I guess, you know? I mean, you know, I'm not gonna be over here. Hmm, so what do you mean? You, you tell him me to draw a straight line across? Oh my god. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 what the? What the? What the? And you tell me, now you're telling me to connect those opposite vertices too? Right here? Let me see what you're talking about, Willis. So you want me to uh, get this and connect it right through here. Wait, what the? What the? The boom. <laughs> oh, I knew you were doing this. I knew you were doing this, man. You, 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 you over here trying to trick me, man. I know you had a reason for this, man. You a smart guy. You a smart guy over here. I thought you were making me look silly. You know what? This guy's smart guy. Hexagon. A hexagon is six equilateral triangles man wow man that's pretty cool man that's pretty cool there's six equilaterals inside you don't see them you don't see them. i see them right there man they're right there look at that bad boy look at that bad boy right there right there right there and so here's the deal i guess with this problem man since we got that line right there since we got this line the one i just drew over that one right there we got that line right there that's kind of like two sides man that's kind of like two sides and so that means that's basically from here to here. You know what I'm saying? From here, like that's one of them. That's the one, and then that's it right there. That's the other one. That's that's we put those together right there, and that's the same as this. So that means we could get that and basically put one over here too, right there, right there. So that means there's two of them around that, and there's uh one right here, I guess, man. So basically, we get that. We get that line that was given to us in the middle, and we can multiply it by three. Now, technically, if you want to be real correct about this, we get that line in the middle, cut it in half. Cut it in half so we can find out the distance of one side of each equilateral triangle. And since there are six sides of this hexagon, each of them the same congruent side of that one side of an equilateral, we can multiply by six. But if you're able to see that bad boy right here, well, all we really got to do, all we really got to do is get that 10, no, 100,500 and multiply it by what? By tray. 3.02 times 10 to the fifth. Or 302,000, you know what I'm saying? Easy work, easy work. Same thing, same thing. Now they want that opposite vertices connected. But again, we know that perimeter 
basically gives us all six of these sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. But then we also notice that if we have a little midpoint here, this is two of those sides. Don't believe me? Well, let's go ahead and connect them right there. Bam, bam. They're all the same, they're all equilaterals. So we get that perimeter, five, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. Enter, two, no, actually it's not two divide, it'll be six divide, six divide. So now each side is 8.34 times 10 to the fourth. Then we multiply it by two, and we got ourselves our answer. 1.67 times 10 to the fifth. Now some of y'all might be saying, Mr. Delgado, you wasting our time. You wasting our dang time. And I say, you know what, why? Well, we could have just gotten that perimeter, 500100, and we could just divide it by three. You get the same answer. And I tell you, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> All right, so this is pretty much the same problem. We're looking for the length of AB. We're looking for that opposite vertices connecting to each other. They gave us the perimeter, 2.81 e to the negative seventh power, okay. 2.81 times 10 to the negative 7. And we're going to go ahead and divide that by 3 if you want. We go ahead and divide it by 3 and we end up with 9.37 times 10 to the negative 8. Now here's the bad part here. Now we got our first problem with the hexagon that gives us something about the area. But then we got to go back to something that I said a little while ago. A hexagon is 6 equilaterals. Six equilaterals, okay? So what we could really do is understand... Wait a sec, what's an apothem? What's an apothem? Well, the apothem is basically this height of one of the equilateral triangles. Because if I go ahead and connect this to this, and I connect this to this... Now, I apologize, my lines aren't the straightest in the world, but you get the point right there, right? If I try to... Con you know what, let me do this a little bit better. Because that was way too sloppy, even for Mr. Delgado. Right there, bam. And then we go like this, bam. We got ourselves those equilaterals right there. And that apothem probably looks super familiar to something you've seen already. That apothem could also be considered the height. So we're gonna use height squared times the square root of three divided by three. But then we're gonna get all that, and that's the area of one of those equilateral triangles. Then we're gonna multiply all that by six. Now, of course, some of y'all are looking at that and you're saying, Mr. Delgado, why can't we simplify it? Why can't we make that easier? And I'd say to you, what are you talking about? What you talking about, Willis? Man, you know what I'd be saying? What you talking about? And then you might be able to tell me, well, why divide by three and then multiply by six when you could just multiply height squared times square root of three times two instead of, you know, having to divide by three, multiply by six. And I'd tell you what? i tell you what? I'll tell you what? You're right. <laughs> But see, that's the whole point. You got to learn how to do that math. You got to be able to see that math. If you see that math, then you're going to be on your way to be the best. And that's what I'm trying to create right here. I'm trying to create champs right here. Champs being the best. Now, maybe you've seen this one. We don't have the height, but it's the area of a regular hexagon. Side squared times the square root of three divided by four. And this is a time for me to kind of elaborate on the word regular. Regular basically means all sides, all angles are congruent. That's all I mean. So we only have six equilateral triangles when we got a hexagon that's regular. So that's the key word right there. Just because we got a hexagon doesn't mean we got equilateral triangles. I've seen some re You know what? The, uh, every hexagon I've ever drawn looks crazy. It, there is no way that any hexagon I've ever drawn has six equilateral triangles on it because I can't do it. My hexagons <laughs> look... I don't know, they look terrible. But once it says regular, then we have to see and assume. Now, we don't have to assume, it's, it is six equilateral triangles in there. So we're gonna get side squared. And we're gonna multiply by the square root of three. Divide this bad boy by four. And multiply by six. And our answer for this problem is 4.36 times 10 to the six. Let me do this one more time because you know what? Sometimes I talk while I'm doing this work and I end up making tiny mistakes and then you guys laugh at me, calling me all sloppy and stuff, Miss 500. Oh yeah, you know what, you're right. Sometimes I do make mistakes, but it's okay because everyone makes mistakes in life. And it's all right, ladies and gentlemen, to make mistakes. We just, we just use these mistakes and bounce back from them and keep moving up, all right? 
Mistakes are just one of those happy little things in life that makes us realize that we could do better. And we're here to do better. You just remember that, all right? Anyways, we got this. Oh, the edge, the edge. You might not know what an edge is. And I'm not talking about edge, one of those cool wrestling superstars. Yeah, boy. Yeah, you don't even know what I'm talking about. I think he's a little bit best of time. The edge is the same thing as the side of one of these equilateral triangles. Oh, man, that was a terrible line. One of these equilateral triangles right there. That's the edge right there. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. Side squared times the square root of three. Wow, my numbers are getting sloppy, man. Times the square root of three divided by four. And we're going to get all that and multiply it by what? By six. All right. One, 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 five. Square root. Three. Square root. Multiply. Four. Divide. Six. Multiply. And our correct answer for this one is 3.23 times 10 to the sixth. Or 323. One, two, three, four. So that looks like what? 3,230,000. All right. Let's do next one. So in this problem, they give us the area. And we need to find the sides, okay? So we can figure out that perimeter. So we're gonna use side squared times the square root of three divided by four multiplied by six for the area of this hexagon. Let me write that area of the hexagon. And we're gonna have to work backwards, all right? So the first thing we undo, we're gonna get that area, eight, seven, seven, two. First thing we undo, we're gonna go ahead and divide by six. You know what, I'll go ahead and set it up right here. Let's do it, let's do it, let's set it up. So six, nah, you know what, let me, let me, let me do it like that. Let me do it like this. Let me do it with that pretty pink. We're gonna get that area. First thing we're gonna do is divide by six, okay? So we're gonna get six divide, okay? That's how we cancel out that six right here. And then we're gonna multiply by four. So we're gonna hit four, multiply, okay? And then after that, well, we're gonna divide again by square root of three. So I'm gonna hit three square root, divide. Then after that, we're gonna hit what? Square root, square root this bad boy. And now I got my side as 58.1, 58.1. Now that we got that, we get six multiplied because there's six signs and it looks like the perimeter of this is 349 or 3.49 times 10 to the second. Now I'm gonna do this one more time because you guys have been laughing at me. I'm gonna get my area, eight, seven, seven, two, enter. Four, multiply, six, enter, three, square root, multiply, divide, square root. Got my 58.1, six multiply. See, I made this face right now. I was like, wait, 58.1? That's not what I wrote down. But we ain't solving for the side. We solving for the what? The perimeter, yeah, boy. So here at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, we got to make sure we know what we're doing. And the more math we practice, the more we're going to know what we're doing. Hmm. So we got this 30, 60, 90. It's so right here. It's that right triangle. It's that special right triangle. But I've been talking about this 30, 60, 90 all day. They gave us the hypotenuse. Now, some of y'all may want to get this divided by two and stuff to get this one right here. And then divide this, multiply that, that side by square root three. Well, look, look. But here's the deal. They essentially, let me draw that picture right here. They gave us the equilateral triangle, but they don't want the whole area. I mean, they gave us the side here. At the end, we get that area and divide it by two. We cut it in half because this is half equilateral. This is half an equilateral. We've been looking at it all night, ladies and gentlemen. So this is half an equilateral. So we get the area cut in half. We cut it in half. So we want half that equilateral triangle. So let's go ahead and check this out. What are we gonna do? We're gonna get side squared times the square root of three divided by what? Four. But really, we're not dividing it just by four. We're dividing it by two times four because essentially what we're doing is we're gonna get this answer and cut it in half. And of course, the real formula is gonna be side squared times the square root of three divided by eight. And that gives us the formula for the special right triangle using the hypotenuse. Yeah, let's do it. 17.55 square root. 3 square root. Multiply. 8 divide. And we call it, we call it one heck of a day. 66.7. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. 
Sometimes people will not know how to do this problem and they will spend the time using Sokotoa to try to figure out this side. Try to figure out this side. And then more like, but see, that's a lot of work here. If you remember, a 30, 60, 90 triangle is the same as half an equilateral. You save yourself a lot of time. And this is the way you get to the next level. I believe this is one of the questions from either the regional qualifier or from state a couple years ago. So this is how you get to that next level. Okay? Same here, same here. Now, you may look at this and you may say, uh-oh, I don't know what this is. Well, let me go ahead and give you that drawing again. Let me see if I can give you that drawing. Let's see if we can get that drawing down here. So what they gave us here is right here. They're basically telling us that from here to here, it's 767, all right? And we're looking for half an equilateral triangle. So what I would do, what I would do is we would get that 767 and multiply that by two to go ahead and get that side right there. And once we got that side, we can use that formula. Side squared times the square root of three divided by four cut in half. Or maybe if one of you wants to be a little different. Maybe you get that 767 and you want to do something a little different. You want to get maybe a different side or maybe not even the side. You might want to get the height. And so that means you would get 767 and multiply it by the square root of three and then use it in this formula. Height squared times the square root of three divided by three cut in half. At the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just here to show you what you can do and what can you do? Well, hopefully you can be the best because you know what? I'm here to help you guys be the best and that's what we're here to do. So I'm going to use the side one just because I'm partial to using whole numbers when I'm multiplying. I don't like using square root of threes, but we're going to use the square root of three anyways. You know what I'm saying? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And hopefully you're already seeing that that square root of three, I mean, is, is here for a reason. Here for a reason, okay? So seven, six, look, I'm already making so many mistakes, man. I don't even know what I'm doing. So we're going to get that and then we're going to square it. So it was like 1,530-ish, okay? Then we squared that. I got 2.35 times 10 to the 6. 3, square root, multiply, okay? I'm using the side formula, by the way, okay? Then we're going to go ahead and get 4, divide, and then 2, divide. And we got ourselves our answer. 5.09 times 10 to the 5th. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do that height squared formula just to make sure I'm on the right track. So we could get 7, 6, 7, enter. 3, square root, multiply. My height for this problem should be about 1.33 times 10 to the third. Now we put that in that formula right there. We're going to square it. 3, square root, multiply. Then we get 3 divide. 2 divide. What do we get? It looks like the exact same thing. Same thing, ladies and gentlemen. So what we're here to do is just be the best. So let's go ahead and make it happen, okay? So they gave us the side. Let's use side squared times the square root of three divided by four and get this and cut it in half. If you can remember this already, side squared times the square root of three divided by eight, power to you. But in either case, we're gonna go ahead and get that area. 347, let's square it. Three, square root, multiply, eight divide. And my area is 26,100. Or 2.61 times 10 to the fourth. You know what I'm saying? Look, ladies and gentlemen, the more we practice, the easier this becomes. Now, this one right here is probably the hardest problem I've ever seen having to deal with 30, 60, 90, e e anything having to do with equilaterals. Okay? Why? Because this problem is crucial. It is a lot of steps if you do not know this pattern if you know this pattern my gosh this is super easy but if you don't know it you may have to do some Pyth pythagorean theorems trigonometric ratios you may have to work forwards and back it's a lot of work but it's kind of easy so let's go ahead and show you what i would do first thing i would do is i would get 0.888 divided by the square root of three and then multiply that by two to get this side right there Okay, next step, I would get 0.888 divided by the square root of 3 to get this side right there. After that, I would hit plus. 
And then after that, I just get this one that's already here, 0 .0, I mean, 0.0, I mean, 0.888, and then hit plus. And we got our three sides, we got our perimeter done, and we ready to get this and call it a day. So let's go ahead and do it. 0 0.888, enter, three, square root, divide, two, multiply, 1.03. That is roughly, roughly this side, 1.03, roughly. Better leave that in your calculator. We talked about this before. Do not write these down and add these later, okay? If you're going to write it down, you got to hit yellow show and at least write like five significant, six significant digits. But me personally, I wouldn't write it down. I keep it in the calculator memory. Or I'd use blue store, blue store next to the recall button right above sign. I'd be using that and storing these numbers, okay? But you could leave it in the calculator's memory. This calculator is pretty smart. Next step, 0.888, enter, 3, square root, divide. You know, I, I feel like I did something wrong here. And I hit to, you know what? I think I did something wrong. Maybe I don't think this is point. Well, I mean, it seems like it is. Huh. Because then I didn't multiply it by 2. Did I do something wrong? Let me go ahead and do it. 0.888, enter, 3, square root, divide. There you go. That one seems about right. I think I might have mistyped an 8 or something. I went ahead and grabbed this as 0.513. And that actually seems very reasonable. Remember, this side down here, this one that I just wrote, should be half of the other one. Okay, so now I have both of them in my calculator memory. You see that? They're both sitting right there. Both sitting right there. So I'm just going to hit plus to connect them. 1.54, that's what I got so far. Last step, 0.888 plus. And we got our answer. 2.43 times 10 to the 0. Or really, or really, oh, we really should have written it. 2.43. You know what? I'm not going to use purple. I like purple. I like it a lot, as you can see. But let's go ahead and use this baby blue because we're gonna be reaching for the skies of this baby blue when we've gotten our final problem done with equilateral triangles when we've done a lot of hard work and we got a lot of success coming our way because equilateral triangles are pretty hard but dude once we get this i mean we got some power to work with equilateral triangles special cases you can use pythagorean theorem if you're lost you can use trigonometric ratios if you're lost at the end of the day you memorize those two formulas having to do with the side or the height of an equilateral triangle you can do a lot with those things equilateral triangles are beautiful beautiful ladies and gentlemen this is the only only triangle where you could use one of the perpendicular dimensions to solve this is why this triangle is beautiful. It reminds me of the square. It reminds me of the square. And notice how both formulas had height squared or side squared. You know, I integrated with the other things like the square root of 3 and all this other stuff. You know why? Well, because, you know, that's just the way it is, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, it's a perfect shape. And we got perfect shapes. Yeah, with the equilateral triangles. Oh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, you couldn't really see all my dance with my left hand right here. I know you saw that, but you didn't see that right. But in any case, hope you guys had a great day. I know I had a great day. We had a great time. Hopefully you did too. And we got to work with some awesome, awesome, awesome equilateral triangles. You know what I'm saying? So I hope you have a good one. Hope you enjoy it. Remember, excellence just ahead when you're working with Mr. 500 right here. Yeah, buddy. All right. Peace out. Have a good one.